Yeah, I always thought that Houston was a little bit more boring than usual, but I mean, I guess, I guess it's good to see that they're not they're not still stuck in traditional finance and they're moving into cryptocurrency development. But yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, we can go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, welcome everyone. My name is Keenan Olson. Uh, really excited again to have Kumal joining us of Unidex. Uh, a really exciting platform. A little bit about the rundown today is. Uh, we're going to do a live demo. So this will be one of the first live demos that we've done, be able to see how the platform works in action, um, do a little bit of um, looking around of their platform, and then we'll do some Q&A. So if you have questions throughout this, definitely drop them into the YouTube chat. Any links that we share or talk about, I'll make sure to drop those into the description afterwards. Um, as always, again, drop questions in the chat, keep it really interactive. Um, happy to answer those as we go through this. Um, otherwise, yeah, uh, again, thank, thanks a lot for joining us today. How are you? Uh, I'm doing fine. It's a little bit of, um, frantic with the development side. We're trying to get, you know, things pushed out by yeah. energy, but yeah, yeah we're doing completely, good. Completely, completely understand. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, really excited to have you, uh, maybe for the audience that might not be aware, do you want to just give a quick introduction about your background and what your team is building? Yeah. So, um, for you know unaware uh, my name is Kronal Amin and I would be the founder of the Unidex project and um, uh, myself I am a trader slash uh, computer science nerd and um, really as we're we, we started this Unidex project because we feel that I don't know, trading is a little bit too fragmented within the, the DeFi ecosystem and um, traders really aren't seeing the tools that they uh, like they need in the DeFi ecosystem so um, essentially our project is to aggregate all services um, throughout any, uh, any financial tool or instrument that you're willing to do, such as options trading, futures trading, leverage trading, or even token swaps. Um, and so uh, that's what we're providing here at Unidex. That's awesome. So, so it a, takes a little more in depth take or approach to something like a, a Uniswap or even a, other aggregators such as like a, a one inch exchange. Yeah, um, we're, we and, aggregate um, even things like one inch um, into our, um, <laughs> so we aggregate <laughs> even aggregators. <laughs> That's awesome. How did this idea start and how did you, how did you form it? Yeah, so I think um, it, it started whenever I made my first move from centralized exchanges back in the first Uniswap season, which was about like June of last year. Mm -hmm. um, I saw like problems whenever I was actually trying to like the whole user experience, you know, like uh, you go to a centralized exchange like FTX or something and you have like really any tools that you need um, presented with you just right then and there. Um, and that is one of the like, I guess, merits to a centralized exchange. You just have all your tools readily available because it's um, fairly easy to add once you have the infrastructure up. Mm -hmm. um, but whenever it came to DeFi, uh, everything was in different places. Um, if you wanted to do options, you had to open up another tab. If you wanted to view those option positions, you needed to open up another tab. You wanted to chart your Uniswap position or even a trade. It's another tab. You know, it got it got quite frustrating and I can see why that people weren't making them switch from uh, their traditional centralized um, broker or exchange into traditional finance, despite offering the same tools. Um, it's, it was way too fragmented and it wasn't convenient enough. And so um, that's, that's why we uh, started making this, um, this product for people. And uh, I think people are really gonna love it. It basically entirely simplifies the whole trading experience. And so. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a really interesting idea. And I, I definitely see that problem too with uh, things on all these different platforms. You're trying to like, try to tell friends like how to, where to start. And yeah. It, it got a million different websites like they're all great in their own ways you know and yeah it's like how, how do you get someone onboarded into DeFi in, in, in a simplistic way um yeah so really interesting and so i i are you launched yet um can people use this as we speak is it on mainnet yeah yeah it, we operate on the mainnet we launched about december 6 and then we went open beta into i think around like march 25th not march 25th i'm saying january 25th um so we've been open beta and we've been collecting feedback changing up the ui um as we go out and adding features as people want to see them so yeah sweet yeah so it sounds like you guys are, are really open to feedback and 
to so everyone listening, yeah, definitely, definitely join the channels. We'll drop those links um, in there and um, have feedback. Yeah, I think to, to get started, um, yeah, we'd love to t- take a peek at, at what you're what you're building and uh, and how, how how it works. If you want to share your screen, yeah, for sure. Um, here, let me do that. So, okay. So um, this is currently what we have for our um, assets. Well, and and you can see this, right? Um, I'm not sure if this is viewable or not. All good. Okay, yeah. So um, this is currently what we have accessible to our public um, open beta. Um, we do have a few changes that we are pushing out pretty soon here, um, including like things like you can uh, uh, view all recent transactions and finance smart chain charting and um, just more general on-chain tools, uh, market orders and stuff. Uh, but this is what we have for like spot trading. Um, and uh, or just swapping in general. Um, our more interesting products are include leverage trading in which this is directly actually using um, Chainlink's uh, price feeds. Um, and in this section, you can uh, basically take a uh, bull or bear positions on um, uh, essentially almost anything that Chainlink um, supports. So for example, you can even take long and short positions on gas fees, um, which I think is a, uh, uh, pretty interesting, uh, you know, as I think like, I think That's it was great. like a week ago, gas prices shot up to 1,200 way. So that would have been a fantastic short opportunity, mm-hmm. but even, um, uh, even non ERC twenties, like for example, uh, um, silver. So you can even take long and short positions on things like silver, um, or BTC to USD. So, yeah. Um, and I can actually even like, for example, go in on a bull or bear position. Like these are operating on the mainnet so that uh, users can just right away go ahead and take a position. Uh, I don't want to like probably go in on a a bearish position on BTC because I am quite bullish, but like, I mean, uh, as a quick demonstration, I can easily just, uh, for example, just here, let's go in 0.1, let's go 0.05. You could just go ahead and like buy into this. Yeah, this is really cool. And and so it almost takes a, a spin with that you see some of the other kind of synthetic assets on there. What was the process like integrating Chainlink into this? Uh, were, were you first hand uh, a part of that process? And what, what's the development cycle kind of look like? Uh, well, first we look at um, what markets that people are interested in. And, um, and first to mention, um, I did just open a 3X uh, short position on BTC there. And so now as the price of BTC drops, um, you know, I'm now um, gaining profit. Um, but anyways, uh, back to the original topic. So first we look at uh, what markets people wanna see. Um, we don't wanna add anything that people aren't necessarily going to be trading uh, on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, we don't think that people are too interested in low volume um, altcoins that we do have a price feed of but not only that um, on something for our target audience, we aren't necessarily targeting novice traders. Um, We're targeting those, uh, that area of um, high volume slash uh, more experienced traders who want to, I guess, have a better hands on. So we, we look at what assets they trade and uh, we, we add the, we list essentially those um, pairs that come with that chain link price feed. Um, when it comes to integrating, it was actually pretty easy. Um, uh, I wasn't part of that myself. I, I was more so the one that was actually going out and doing the research and actually choosing the, the price fees that we should be integrating. Um, but uh, the actual integration itself um, was fairly quick. Uh, the, the ecosystem is pretty thorough. There's enough documentation. And um, really it was a it was a really satisfying experience, especially when seeing like all the price feeds that are supported. So, yeah. Yeah. They, you know, it's been great work with y'all too. And uh, yeah, it, it's just crazy. The, the different feeds that you see, like, I haven't seen a platform, you know, trading, trading gas. Feeds. <laughs> a, lot, a lot more feeds. I don't know if you heard with a uh, off chain reporting being launched oh, yeah. on mainnet. And so lots more data is going to be coming online here um, and for traders. What have you seen from your community of some of the stuff that are 
people. Clearly, it looks like some of some of like the main ones, Ethereum, BTC. Have there any been kind of like out of left field uh, things that people have been requesting, like stocks and um, other other sort of commodities? Yeah, um, with uh, with the regard to stocks, um, at least our current target audience, uh, we haven't really seen too much volume when it comes to stocks. Uh, generally, personally myself, uh, I I would like to see a lot more. So um, definitely would be adding a lot more of those in the in the future. Um, but when it comes to like really like just out of field um, uh, ones, uh, we have actually taken it ourselves to actually add some of those. So um, we are working with the development team to, to basically add uh, like, for example, Bitcoin dominance so that people can take long and short positions on Bitcoin dominance. Um, Bitcoin fees. So we, we first took it a step further with uh, ETH gas fees. And now we're taking a step further with Bitcoin transaction fees. Um, so you can essentially hedge the, the efficiency of either of the two networks um, as people basically rant online, which one's better on Twitter. <laughs> um, uh, outside of that, um, we haven't necessarily seen too, too many weird ones. Again, volume is a concern. Um, and also uh, j- just general like development cycle. And like, we, want, we don't want to focus on something that people aren't going to be interested in. Um, but I think those would be probably be the only two weird ones, Bitcoin dominance and uh, Bitcoin fees or e- even ETH gas fees. So, yeah. And so, so the, these are aggregating from, from the chain of price feeds. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then so you were mentioning about how this aggregates from multiple aggregators. Can you, can you elaborate a little bit more on what you meant? Mm-hmm. On that front? Yeah, so specifically uh, this section that we're using here, um, this this section wouldn't actually entail that. Um, but when, some, when we're talking about something like token swaps um, or even futures trading, um, that, that the futures trading isn't actually live yet. Um, we're still uh, delivering that in our closed beta. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, when, it, when it's something like swaps, we basically have a system that goes ahead and checks or like an engine of it, um, if you will. That goes ahead and checks uh, the the return that you get from one inch that you get from Paraswap or you get from uh, Zero X's AI um, API as of recently, and if need be, um, directly calling Uniswap, Kyber, Balancer, just to see if that can get you a more efficient fill. And mm-hmm. then once that swap is conducted, um, it'll be as simple as that. You just click trade, and there you go. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to something like uh, perpetual products that um, even are using Chainlink's price feeds, um, for example, DYDX and so forth, um, when you're filling along, it's same thing like the token swap process. All it does is goes ahead and checks what's the most efficient fill here, um, because there are you know multiple platforms that you can go ahead and to enter in leverage positions, um, so that uh, it will go ahead and check which is the most efficient fill, um, taking into account funding rate because that is something to also watch out for. And then um, it will give you the best efficient fill. So you're essentially never worrying about um, slippage or is this the right place for me to be trading? Mm-hmm. It, it, it's really interesting. And how you men- mentioned the funding fills. There, there's a question from the audience here. And yourself, as, as a founder of, of a trading platform, mm-hmm. there's a lot of this talk that's happening in, in traditional markets, especially around Robinhood with. Uh, settlement layers of, of the T2. So when, when a settlement happens, it really doesn't go through until two days. Are you seeing more influx and kind of what's your opinion on this and how decentralized markets work uh, with instant settlements? Yeah, I think uh, actually, I mean, I myself, I, I actually do get frustrated with traditional finance myself um, sometimes. Um, well, I, like I mentioned before, I, I am a trader um, at heart. Uh, and I do trade a wide range of markets. Uh, I think the case with uh, traditional finance and just how long settlement takes, uh, it really adds to, like a lot of barriers. I un- understand that this is just how our finance system works, um, but obviously it's out with the old and with the new now. Um, uh, the stuff that we're delivering on, um, on the decentralized uh, networks uh, like on Ethereum uh, to offer these um, these synthetic uh, products and um, what other people are also building as well. Um, it really opens up the, the barrier um, to when it comes to just 
being able to really gain exposure to these markets. And so um, I think a lot more people from traditional finance are going to start moving over to um, decentralized products. And I think that tipping point is whenever people don't even actually realize they're using a blockchain based product yeah. and um, they're just kind of entering a position. They're like, Hey, this works. You know, I don't have to wait. So, yeah. yeah I, there's definitely going to be a few barriers. In there. One of what I want to ask you about next um, mm -hmm. around layer twos, but, but the whole settlement thing, it, it's interesting. And a lot of people don't even know until you're, you're using this and you hear people talk about GMC, GME, AMC, you know, and like yeah. you go and hop on Robinhood and you like buy and be like, oh, like you don't even really have this until <laughs> a few days right. later, you know, and then you go on to some of these decentralized platforms and you're able to instantly just be able to, you know, have a synthetic right. version of this or of just different crypto assets. Um, and, and we see more and more of these data feeds getting popped up daily. Mm -hmm. um, with your platform, um, kind of what I was about to ask before, being on Ethereum, what do you see with gas prices and the congestion that's happening? Obviously a, a hot topic um, today. Are you exploring moving to other chains? Are you exploring layer twos? Are you thinking maybe this will resolve itself um, as things like optimism get launched? Um, as they said, it sounds like yesterday, sometime in March. What are your kind of thoughts around all this and the usability um, of your platform? And does that worry you at all? Right. So I think this is a, a, a multi-step uh, answer. So for one, we are servicing traders. We mm -hmm. want to give the best experience. So yeah, we are multi-chain. So mm -hmm. one of our few um, chains that we are going to support um, as of our first shift is going to be Binance Smart Chain. Uh, moving away from decentralized concerns, it's where a lot of the liquidity is. So um, we are moving to full Binance chain support and that would include, um, we're recently um, launching option support. So we would be the first peer to peer American options um, on Binance Smart Chain. Um, outside of that, we also see leverage protocols opening up on options, uh, not options, on Binance Smart Chain. So we're also gonna be supporting leverage trading on uh, Binance Smart Chain, and as well as um, just aggregated swaps, you know, that's our whole theme, yep. aggregating the whole market. So we're already going to be supporting um, options, token swaps, uh, leverage trading um, with a, a full dashboard and basically portfolio overview on the Ethereum mainnet, Binance um, Chain. Um, we are going to start supporting Layer 2 because we did see um, a, lot of, uh, uh, a lot of development happening there. Um, for example, Uniswap is um, experimenting with the, the optimism rollup, or and uh, DYDX recently. They um, I forgot what solution they used, but um, I saw their demo and um, really looked into it. And it's a it's a really good experience. You know, it basically mm -hmm. limits all the concerns when it comes to slow, inefficient blockchains and the concern with moving uh, financial activity on chain. Uh, but I do think that the solution would resu uh, resolve itself when it comes to on ETH. Um, there are some, you know, protocols that we have in place to go ahead and um, alleviate some of that, such as the EIP-1559, which those aren't uh, familiar with, should help with um, variance and way price. Um, and so I do think solutions like this are going to get um, widely adopted as well as layer two scaling solutions. Um, and then of course, ETH2, while we have been waiting for it for a while, uh, I think that's going to end up giving a pretty satisfactory um, response from the, the whole ETH community. And um, even those that were have left the ETH ecosystem for these high fees are going to be returning to see um, it's a pleasant experience now again. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a good way to kind of put it. Uh, you mentioned the, the EIP that's coming out. And so it's EIP 1559, correct? Yeah, yeah. You, for, for the audience that uh, might not be completely aware, they might have heard it being talked about on Twitter. Do you want to just give like a, a quick just LE5 of, of what that is and, and kind of what, what, what it's trying to solve? Yeah, so when it comes to at least the EIP in general, um, Basically, this is essentially a vote um, throughout the, the community um, whether or not certain like proposals take place. So just like you can take proposals on something like uh, your favorite DApp, like uh, CC Swap or Uniswap, 
Uh, essentially, we're voting here to, there's, there's two main components that may interest day-to-day uh, -day users. For one, it takes some of the base fee that happens with an Ethereum transaction and it burns it. So it adds a somewhat of a deflationary uh, mechanic to Ethereum as we currently don't have that. Um, so it's a bit of a monetary policy change. And then it also reduces the variance in way prices. Because right now we have a essentially a, a free market system for way. If someone wants to essentially clog the system and be paying 2000 way uh, transactions, uh, if, it, if we clog it enough and we spam that enough, then that's what everyone is essentially forced to use. Um, so this would help alleviate some of the concerns with this and some of the mass like swings when we see big dips or mm -hmm or big spikes even um, on ETH or just on chain in general. Um, it should help stabilize that and keep it very linear. So at a stable, like let's say 50 um, with a very minimal change in um, weight price. Um, and so it should help alleviate those swings and, um, and uh, inconsistencies with uh, gas targeting. So, yeah. Yeah, th thanks for explaining that. It when you explain it, it, it sounds like, all right, like, why wasn't this always just kind of uh, yeah. <laughs> the case, you know, and it, it, you see this in, in different platforms where you can really spam the network, especially uh, there's stuff like KeeperDAO, where you can do this and then just create arbitrage opportunities for yourself yeah. and, and, and like make, make, a, make a profit. So, so it's crazy. Like, I mean, I guess it's like the free market principles that uh, F is mm -hmm. built around, but yeah, it's really interesting. It's interesting to see the different debates that, that happen uh, across crypto Twitter and, and the whole community uh, around that, uh, that that's happening. Yeah. Back with uh, decentralized oracles, how big of a, a decision were these when you're building a, a platform such as yourself? Um, and, and like, kind of what's, the, what's the thought process that goes into to choosing uh, an oracle? Yeah. So, Whenever it came to, for example, choosing Chainlink or even using another solution, um, I think a good example of this we can easily just point to as a recent example is if you if you haven't heard about what happened with the situation at Kraken, for example, um, recently on our um, price dip that happened um, earlier this week, um, we saw a big massive price swing um, that basically cleared the entire order book, and it uh, it basically would have liquidated you if you were in any any sort of leverage position. It didn't really matter what asset you were in. Um, and so when it came to choosing a decentralized Oracle, we had to choose something that would be reliable um, in the sense that it's aggregating from different multiple sources and or it's feeding the correct data that we want. Um, and so we didn't want to go ahead and choose a, an aggregate from a system that uses a single source because now we're prone to manipulation if that's the case, because anyone can then go to there um, and manipulate the order books that may incur in that system, for example, Kraken. Mm -hmm. um, if we were pulling from an Oracle that was solely um, pulling a, uh, API data from Kraken, that would have been very bad news for anyone essentially trading on our platform. So our only solution at the time um, and our current solution really is uh is chainlink which aggregates from multiple places and incentivized to do so so it's um it's it really became a no-brainer to to stick with chainlink and um pulling from multiple sources um which is actually funny if you think about it since we are an aggregator and now we're choosing an aggregator <laughs> of other <laughs> other um price feeds um, that's, like that, that's the answer that's that, that's the aggregation answer. Here's a centralized digital <laughs> source that, that, that's one lesson to take home <laughs> yeah exactly exactly um so yeah it was it was essentially a no-brainer especially when you're talking about you know user funds and um uh and just uh, the safety of your your trade you know you, the last thing you want to be concerned about whenever you're trading on uh even a centralized exchange is can a whale just come in and just wipe out this order book and then leave me liquidated with like no real like liquidity there and um that just becomes almost infinitely harder whenever you're um trading on a based off a synthetic asset off a decentralized oracle so um i think uh i think definitely it was uh, the easiest move to 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 go ahead and use a system like this. Fascinating. Cool. Um, yeah, well, uh, I wrap up here. Uh, 
if the community wants to wants to follow your progress, get involved with adding new assets and, and to follow everything that, that you're building and working on, even to maybe get into the, some of those closed betas that, that you're working on, where's the best place for them to uh, get into your, your community and, and follow along? Yeah, so um, our current website is unidex.exchange. Um, so users can go ahead and um, see our landing page there. We do have a plethora of links that people can go ahead and see, for example, our Discord, our um, Telegram, and our announcement channel there as well. Uh, most of our communication does happen on Telegram, but a lot of our feedback and more organized uh, criticism does come from Discord. So you can give a pretty thorough answer there and we can easily review it. Um, and as well as uh, like organized channels for like, for example, options, which also, by the way, uses um, chain link price feeds to go ahead and settle um, your, your options positions there as well. Uh, but it's stuff like that. Uh, most of our discussion, again, happens on Telegram. So you can go ahead and talk with the community on whether or not um, other people do want to see something like, for example, uh, Apple or anything like that. And if people are interested, we can even spin that up there. Um, but yeah, our best place to reach is on our Telegram chat um, for criticism, probably our Discord chat. If you want to go ahead and try out the open beta that exists right now, you can go to unidexbeta.app and go ahead and play around with the services that we're offering there right now. Um, and um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, cool. So yeah. yeah, I'll make sure to drop all those links into the description afterwards. Uh, video should be up in, in the next few hours. Um, make a few edits. Okay. Uh, otherwise, yeah, really appreciate you joining. Uh, for everyone listening in, um, definitely uh, register for the upcoming Chainlink Hackathon. And you can find that on our website, chain.link slash hackathon. Uh, you build awesome products with, with Chainlink, have tons of sponsors coming in. Uh, it'll be a great way if you're, if you're interested in, you know, building something on Solana, um, Avalanche, uh, Matic, or Polygon now, uh, any of these different platforms, uh, definitely, definitely give it a look, sign up. Don't really need to be a developer to, to be successful in a hackathon. It's a great way to learn new skills. Um, and some of the best hackathon projects are well-rounded teams. Uh, one inch came from a hackathon. Uh, and, and so you need you need people that, that can help with the design, the front end, everything. Um, and so definitely recommend everyone joining that. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like and, and subscribe to our channel for when we go live in the future. Um, otherwise, yeah, thanks again for joining and uh, we'll see everyone.